In this lecture, you'll learn about how BGP routing works within service providers. This is the last slide that you saw in the last lecture. So in our example, we've got five service providers, SP1 through to SP5. Each of those service providers have got their own customers and are also running their own IGP internally as well. Each of the service providers will be assigned a unique AS number. That is assigned through the internet authorities like IANA. So each of them have got an individual unique AS, and that AS number is going to be used to control the routing of the internet traffic between them. BGP is a path vector routing protocol. By default, it makes routing decisions in a way that is similar to RIP, which uses hop count. But rather than choosing the path with the shortest physical hop count, meaning by router by router, it chooses the path with the shortest AS path. So the least amount of ASs from the source to the destination. It doesn't care about physical router by router hops within those other ASs. BGP routers are not aware of the individual physical hops that traffic takes as it traverses another AS. They just see that other AS as an overall individual hop. And that makes the solution much more scalable than if they were aware of physical hop by physical hop. So let's work through how this is going to work with an example. And in the example, we're looking at how traffic is going to get from customer three over in the top right down to the 203.0.113.8 slash 29 network for customer four down in the bottom left. If you're wondering why I use 203.0.113 and subnet it into smaller chunks for all of the examples, it's because that range of IP addresses is actually designated as being used for documentation. So when I'm talking about internet routing, I want to use IP addresses that are public, not private. That's why I'm using this range. But I only get 203.0.113. It's just a single slash 24. So I have to chop it up into smaller networks. Okay, in this example, the customer has been allocated 203.0.113.8 slash 29 by their service provider, which is service provider 4, who are using AS65004. And in our example, we need to advertise that route out to all of the other service providers, including service provider 3, which is where customer 3 are at. So first up, Service Provider 4, they are connected to Service Provider 1 using IP address 203.0.113.1 on that link. So Service Provider 4 will advertise the route 203.0.113.8 slash 28 to Service Provider 1 using BGP. It advertises it with an AS path of 65004. I'll go back a slide. You see 65004 is service provider 4. So it's advertising it, saying, hey, you can get to that through me, and I'm AS 65004, and the IP address to use to get to it is 203.0.113.1, which is also at me. Use that as your next hop. So then service provider 1 learns how to get to 203.0.113.8 via SP4 with AS65004. SP1 will put that information into its routing table. And then because it's also got a BGP relationship with service provider 2, AS65002, it will pass the information on to service provider 2. SP1 is connected to service provider 2 using a different physical link. So it's got a different IP address here. 203.0.113.17 for our example. So service provider one advertises it to service provider two. And when it does that, it prepends its own AS number onto the AS path. So when it was advertised from SP4 to SP1, the AS path was 65004. SP4's AS number. When SP1 passes the information on to SP2, it prepends its own AS onto that AS path. So it's now going to be 65001 space 65004. 
and service provider one will say to get there use my ip address which is 203.0.113.17 as your next hop so service provider one and service provider two now know how to get to customer four service provider two again will pass it on to service provider three because it's got a bgp relationship with them the ip address that connects service provider two to service provider three is 203.0.113.33 and service provider 2's AS number is 65002. So when service provider 2 passes the information on to service provider 3, it again will prepend its own AS onto the existing AS path. So the AS path now that service provider 3 learns is 65002 space 65001 space 65004, and it learns that it can reach it with a next hop address of 203.0.113.33, which is over at SP2. So at this point, service provider 3 has learned how to get to customer 4 over the top path. But we've also got the bottom path available here as well, and it's going to get advertised along the bottom path as well. So service provider four, it doesn't just advertise it to service provider one. It's also running BGP to service provider five. It will advertise the information over there as well. Again, this is a different link than the link to service provider one, different link going to service provider five. So it's going to have a different IP address, 203.0.113.49 in our example. So service provider four advertises 203.0.113.8 slash 28 to AS to service provider five, it advertises an AS path of 65004 and its IP address in the link to service provider five. You know what, let me just fix that to save any confusion right now. That should say SP5, not AS5, because if we look back at the diagram again, the AS at SP5 is 65005. So it advertises it over there with an AS path of 65004 and its own IP address of 203.0.113.49 as the next hop address. Then SP5 will put that information in its routing table so it knows how to get to customer four now and it will pass the information on to SP3 because it's got a BGP relationship with it. The IP address connecting SP5 to SP3 is 203.0.113.65. So when SP5 advertises up to SP3, the AS path will now be 65005 space 65004, and SP3 will get that information. So SP3 has now learned two different paths that it can take to get to 203.0.113.8 slash 29. It can either go along the top path or the bottom path. It can go via SP2 as its next hop with an AS path of 65002, 65001, 65004, and a next hop address of 203.0.113.33, or it can go via SP5 with an AS path of 65005, 65004, and the next hop address of 203.0.113.65. Both of those routes will be learned by SP3 via BGP, so they will both go into the BGP table. The BGP table is similar to, for BGP, like the, AS, the OSPF database, is for OSPF. So all routes that are learned from BGP go into the BGP table. But just like with an IGP, it's only the best path, only the best route that's going to make it into the routing table and actually be used. So SP3 is going to choose the best of those two paths that it learned, and it's going to choose the path via SP5 because it's got a shorter AS path. If we look back the previous slide again, via SP2 is going through 65002, 65001, 65004. So that's three ASs. Via SP5 is going through 65005, 65004. So that's only two ASs. The router is going to choose the shortest path based on the number of ASs. So it's the, the shortest path based on the shortest AS path is going to be preferred. So you can see that this is similar to RIP using the shortest hop count, but rather than a hop being an individual physical router, 
a hop is the entire AS of another service provider. And the router is not aware. It doesn't care what's happening within that AS. It doesn't know about the individual physical hops inside there. It just sees the AS as an entire hop itself. So looking at the whole thing end to end, customer three has got a default static route pointing to the service provider SP3. So if we're going to send traffic from customer three to customer four, destination address of 203.0.113.9, for example, customer three will send the traffic to SP3 according to its default static route. SP3 will use the BGP route it knows that the next hop is 203.0.113.65 at AS 65005, so it'll send it there. AS 65005 knows that the next hop is 203.0.113.1 at AS 65004, so it will send it there. And SP4 is the service provider that actually allocated that public IP address to the customer. So SP4 knows how to get there. It will send the traffic down to the customer. So that's how we propagate routes with BGP and then also how the traffic is going to be forwarded in the actual data plane. Okay, last couple of things to tell you. First one is load balancing. By default, BGP does not do load balancing. It just selects a single best path. If multiple paths to a destination are available, which do have identical AS paths, then only one of them is going to make it into the routing table. You can override that and do load balancing if you want, but by default, it's always going to be just one path which is selected. And the last thing to tell you about is BGP policy. So you saw already that it's the route with the shortest AS path that is going to be the preferred route by default, but you can override that if you want by configuring BGP policy. A reason you would maybe want to do that is if you're a service provider, you're an AS, and you've got links to other ASs, and those links have got different bandwidths. So going back to our example again, let's say that the top path here, which has got a longer AS path, there's actually higher bandwidth along the top path. Say that we are SP3, and we've got a higher bandwidth connection to SP2 than we do to SP5. So by default, traffic's going to go through SP5 because it's got a short AS path. But if we know the top path has got higher bandwidth, then we could influence the path selection to force it to go via the top path rather than the bottom path. So you can do that by configuring BGP policy. And you can manipulate the path that traffic is going to take both for traffic going outbound that you're sending and also for traffic coming into you as well. Okay, so that was how service providers configure BGP. In the next lecture, we'll look at the actual configuration commands to configure this.